Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Recently, I've created what I've called the ultimate dust boot that fits the DeWalt writer on my X-Carb CNC machine. Now, I thought it'd be useful, partly to those people who want to go and build the uh, ultimate dust boot, but also for anyone who wants to learn a bit more about the design process, I thought it'd be useful if I went through uh, the, the whole approach that I made from start to finish in creating that dust boot. And in particular, today, I'm looking at the design aspects using VCarve Pro. Now, I started by making loads and loads of measurements uh, of the X-Carve and where the DeWalt writer sat in it, uh, at all the various heights and where the center points of this, that and the other were. Uh, and I did it really carefully and I did it as accurately as I could. I then came back uh, into uh, the study here and started doing some drawings. And you can probably see here my uh, finished drawing. I'll put it on the screen for you now. And here I've got all the components uh, that went to make up uh, the ultimate dust boot. But the key component for me, uh, and uh, one of the two we're looking at in this video, is this element here, which is the main uh, shoe or boot part of the ultimate dust boot. And this is the part that has all the bristles fitted to it, uh, and this is really the key component. And one of the first things I did uh, was to uh, print out uh, the drawing of that uh, bottom section of the dust boot, uh, and I did it at full scale. So therefore this is the right size, or the same size, as it will be uh, when it's made. I took this to the workshop and I cut out all around the outside, and I was then able to offer it up uh, to the X-Carve uh, to just get a, a good feel for whether it was going to fit or not. And once that was done, and I was happy, I was able then to come back here and start using VCarve Pro. So right now I'm in my drawing package and I'm using a free uh, piece of software called DraftSight, and I really do recommend it. It is extremely good, and extremely good value for money too. And I've got here the actual drawing I did of the uh, main part of the ultimate dust boot, and it's the part that you'll recognize from uh, this drawing here. Now, I've saved it, and it's in a format uh, with, with an ending DWG, so it's, it's saved as a drawing file. Now, one of the things you can do with VCarve Pro to save uh, going through any uh, recreation job, starting a drawing from scratch in there, is I can take this drawing as it is. I'll just minimize this now. If I go to VCarve Pro, and I'm going to start a, a new file. And I've specified my uh, piece of uh, material as being 190 millimeters square and there it is represented there. And I've set it at 19 millimeters thick. And uh, I'm, I've said my units are millimeters, my XY datum is the bottom left-hand corner here, uh, and that's all I need to specify uh, for now. Now, one of the uh, neat things is I can now import uh, that file that you saw me looking at in the drawing packet. So I've gone from File, Import, Import Vectors, uh, and the actual file you are looking at in the drawing package is the top one, which is Demo Boot Outline. So I'm going to open that, and you can probably see this uh, dotted thing down here. That is it. And all I've got to do now is move that to the center of my workpiece, which I can do very simply by going to the transform object on the right there and center it to the material there. So it's that option there. And that's now centered. And I'll close that. And I can look at the individual components of that. That uh, is a circle. And I can look at the characteristics of that, of that circle. Uh, it says it's got a radius of 37 millimeters. Uh, I can look at the characteristics of this circle. It says it's got a, a radius of 18, a diameter of 36 millimeters. In actual fact, after I created it, I did wish that that was slightly smaller. So I'm going to say that its diameter is 35. And now this change has not been reflected in any of the files that I've given away. Uh, so if you want that to be 35 instead of 36, you've got to make that change yourself. And there we are, and I've just reduced that in size. I can close that. Now, if you look closely, you can see if I select 
this outer shape, that's all one piece. So I could now uh, go straight to the um, toolpath uh, menu over on the right, and I can now specify uh, how I'm going to cut that out. And I would use a, a profile toolpath. Uh, I'd do a dip depth of cut of 20 millimeters. That guarantees it goes through my material. Uh, I've got an end mill selected here, which is a quarter of an inch or 6.35 millimeters in diameter. I'll just check its characteristics. I want a fairly slow feed rate uh, because um, you know, we don't want to uh, put the X carve under too much strain. Uh, so that's all okay. Um, I would want some tabs, so I can add the tabs here and I'll edit them and I'm going to put in a tab here would be useful, a tab here would be useful. I'm choosing places where uh, when you've got the finished piece it's, it's relatively easy to clean it up and I'm going to put one uh, here. So I'm happy with that. I just make sure that uh, we're cutting it on the outside so that would produce that shape and I can now um, give it a, a name and we'll call this Demo Outside. So there we have Demo Outside, I'll make it calculate it. It's now warning me I'm going all the way through material, I know that. And I can now preview what that looks like and there it is going round and round and it's making that cut. Now that was pretty easy really, but of course you might not have that drawing package or you may prefer to start from scratch and use VCAR Pro. So I'll show you that process now. So let's assume now that we're starting from scratch with VCAR Pro uh, and we don't have anything created in any other drawing package. Uh, so uh, let's just pretend that this drawing that I have printed out before is actually just a sketch which I drew uh, whilst I was in the workshop. Now, I'm going to uh, say create a new file, and it just so happens we've got the figures that we entered last time. So my piece of wood is 190 millimeters square, it's 19 millimeters thick, uh, my XY datum is bottom left hand corner, I'm working in millimeters and the rest is fine, so I'll tick OK there. Now for simplicity, to make the arithmetic easy, rather than drawing it uh, this way up, I'm actually going to draw it that way up. Uh, that means that the, the part which is going against the main frame of the CNC, the back of the dust boot, is now going to be at the bottom. So remember, our datum is at the bottom here, and so uh, Y increases that way and X increases that way. So uh, it just makes life a lot easier. Now one of the key components in our uh, design is the large hole which takes the writer. Uh, so I might just as well start with that. And I know it's got a radius of 37 millimeters. You can see it's already set there at 37 millimeters. And from my drawing, I know that that has to be 87 millimeters from the back. And for now, I'm going to assume that uh, the back is 10 millimeters uh, from the bottom here, just for simplicity. So uh, a Y measurement uh, needs to have 10 millimeters added to it. So 87 plus 10 is 90. So I'm going to say that my Y is going to be 90 there. Now my X, now again from my measurements, I know that the distance from the left-hand side to the center of that circle is uh, 67 millimeters. And again, if we had a margin of 10, uh, that makes that 77. So there we go. And I'm now going to say create. So there's our first circle, uh, which I've highlighted now. Now I now want to put the uh, small hole that is there for the dust extractor hose. Uh, and that has a diameter of 36 millimeters. So I'll go to my circle command again. Um, I've got um, a diameter of 36 and now I've got to get its XY position uh, correct. Now I know from my drawing that the centre of this hole should be 134 millimetres but don't forget we've got to add on the 10 so it's 144 uh, from the left so my X is 144 and I know my Y uh, measured from the plate at the back is 51 uh, add on 10 so that becomes 61. So I've created that. So there are those two key components already 
done. Now I'm saving my work and I'm calling this demo boot. I think it would be quite a useful idea to get some other lines on here as some reference points. Now I'm going to start by drawing a line, go from uh, the bottom left hand corner, which if you remember we've got a gap of 10 in each direction, so that would be from the point 10, 10. So 10 for the x and 10 for the y. Uh, I know that this line should be 131 millimeters long uh, in order to get to the far right hand side. Uh, so, uh, and the angle would be zero. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to say the angle is zero, and I'm going to say it should be 131 in length. And I've added that. There we go. So we've got that, that uh, first line. Now I want a line to go vertically up here, but I don't know how long it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, take a, a, a wild guess and I'm going to say that I want another line uh, which is at 90 degrees this time and I want its length to be, for sake of argument, 40. And I've added that. So there we go, that's that line. Because at some point it's going to uh, be trimmed off and made part of the outer circle of the dust boot itself. So we'll leave that there, I'll press escape, uh, and now I want another line going up from here, and again I don't know exactly how long it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it should go up to uh, level with the centre of this circle, and I know from my rough drawing uh, that that's 87 millimetres from uh, the uh, back of the machine, so if I go to the line command I'm going to start my start point here uh, and I don't have to go through this rigmarole up there uh, and now I'll just say that I want uh, an angle of 90 and I want a length of 87. And that's added that to there and that's level with the centre of that circle. So I'll close that. Uh, so that's alright so far. Um, but then we've got some extra bits here. We've got uh, this cut-in here. So we need to define that. And I know that that cut-in starts at 43 from that edge. So I'm going to do another line. And I know it's 43 from, from that edge, so its actual X position is 53. And its Y position for the start is 10. So that's on that line there. So I'll add that. And we want it to go straight up. We'll forget the fillets at the moment. We'll pretend we're drawing part of a rectangle. So I'm going to go up by 25 millimeters, which is the allowance for the um, maker slide, which is at the back of uh, the area where we're working. So I need it to go at an angle of 90 degrees. And I need it to be 25 millimeters long. I've added that. And then I'm going to go along this way. I know I've got to go along 48 at an angle of zero. So I'll put zero there. And I'll put 48 there. And I've added that line. So we're at this point now. And now I want to come straight back down and I want to hit uh, the bottom line here. And the software is clever enough to help me do that. There's a target. It tells me my line is going to be 25 uh, long and its angle is 90 degrees. So I'll just press the, the left hand mouse button and that's taken care of that. So I'll now escape out of that. Well that's the end of part one. There are two more parts to go I'm afraid. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.